Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Thanks so much for being here on this podcast audio format hosted at Above Life channel on YouTube. Today's topic is being spiritual. I'd like to talk to you a bit about what does it mean for you from your perspective. I hope that this inspires you to ponder this, to really consider this, because the answer is within you. What does it mean for you being spiritual? What does that mean for you? Grab out your journal, make sure you write that question down. It's a great journal prompt, an opportunity to go deeper, to actually connect for yourself, inside yourself, to listen to the voice of your spirit. In order to be spiritual, you must connect and be connected with your spirit. I understand that this con- this um, in the context of spirituality, that can mean a there can be so many different definitions, so many different ranges, variations of, of what being spiritual or spirituality means for individuals. So it is very much a personal relationship, a deeper connection to the divine within us. What is that, whatever that means for you, if that means God, if that means creator, if that means earth, if that means goddess, if that means universe, prime creator, cosmic consciousness, whatever that means for you, it's that divine connection within you. I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I came to uh, talk about this topic today, being spiritual. It has occurred to me that there is a perception, a rather a misperception about what people who are spiritual are. Um, From my perspective, because I do work here at Above Life Channel as a a channeling psychic medium, and I also do work on Fairy Grasshopper. That's my other YouTube channel where I talk about intuitive topics. I do some, some spirit education there. I do some vlogs, some I. I show uh, tools like card decks and things like that, that people can use, you can use for your own connection, your DIY resource. And I have this very strong awareness that, especially um, due to watching, reading the comments, because I do, I read your comments on both my channels. I don't always respond, but I read them, that there is this, perception that because I'm spiritual, that I don't have my own personal views or opinions, or therefore personal views or opinions, those are ego, and being spiritual means connected to spirit, and so you can't have both. There's this like misperception, almost like almost like how, you know, you put famous people on a pedestal, like famous rock stars like Prince, you put them on a pedestal like Icon or someone like Marilyn Monroe, you put them on a pedestal like, wow, and you have completely unrealistic expectations of those iconic individuals and yet they're very human and so too is anyone who is also spiritual. Anyone in the church, any, any clergy member, anyone that is a well-known or famous psychic or a spiritual leader of any kind or a spiritual teacher, everyone that is in the body is a human and a spirit both. It's not, they're not exclusive. You're both. So being spiritual doesn't mean you don't use your mind or aren't influenced by your brain, your personal thoughts, your own opinions. There is always some sort of bias. There's some sort of lensing. Anyone that does channeling has that. There, there is not, there can't not be because the lensing or the bias could be the way they speak the way when you watch them on a video, they look, the way they, the color they choose to wear that day, the way they 
use specific phrases or words or the way they sound, like the tone of their voice, the cadence of their speech. The, there's so many different ways that there's a bias because a channel, someone who is in that place of alignment, channeling and sharing information is going to share through their way through their funnels and filters. It's just natural. It may not be content bias or filtering, but it is, there are many, many different ways that you as you're watching, receiving the information are filtering through what? Through your bias. You're receiving through your lensing, through your variety of personal opinions, perspectives, expectation. And here we are right back to expectations. What do you expect? When you find a psychic reader online, what do you expect from them? Do you expect answer? An answer, a clear, definitive, precise answer. If psychic work, if being spiritual meant clear, specific answers, don't you think the world will be a completely different place right now? Oh, yes. And the fact that it's not should be evidence in itself that life is more artistic. There's more unseen aspects and influencers, and they're not just the way people feel. Have you heard about, if anybody's in business or understands anything about marketing and such, that there's this, this psychology of, of consumerism and how people buy based on their feeling and what they feel, not necessarily what they rationally need or make sense, but how they feel about the transaction. Same with voting. How do you feel about that person? It may not be rational and intellectual or analytical only. There is other factors at play that are difficult to judge and evaluate and determine within a person about how they're going to react or respond, whether they're going to make a purchase, whether they're going to make a vote, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Expectation in the arena of spirituality is something that is like a bar that can never be reached. It's like, a, you know, you say the, the term or the concept of raising the bar. Well, there is no bar. It's the sky's the limit for expectation because individuals will place their own need to be valued and the value of that own individual, that individual person is about being right in the mind. But that's not about being spiritual. So let me talk to you. Okay, I'm not explaining this very well. I can explain to you the perspective of what I have learned about being spiritual, what that means, based upon what it isn't. So being spiritual does not mean neutral. It doesn't mean you don't have an opinion. It doesn't mean you don't have your own personal worldview. It doesn't mean you're unbiased and non-prejudicial. It doesn't mean you don't judge. It, it means that you recognize that you have awareness that all of these things are a factor that show up in the work that you do and show up in the relationships you have, show up in the fulfillment of your behaviors and your actions that you take, whether you're actually a spiritual worker or you're simply a person who is spiritual and acknowledges your spiritual connection, whatever that might be, whether it's a God, a deity, or earth, or whether that's spiritual, being spiritual means being connected to yourself. And that's probably the sweetest, most accurate description of what being spiritual is, connection to yourself. So it's not neutrality. It's not abandoning the ego mind. It's not someone that's free of their ego mind. You must detach from your ego mind. Well, what you really must do if you're in the spiritual area is what you uh, strive to do is to do your best to release the outcome and outcomes and do your best to be present. So releasing outcomes, being present, these are constant things that I am a try to be aware of during any session that I have releasing the outcomes and being present. Those are the two most important things in the context of being spiritual. So expectation and neutrality are completely false. Expectations 
are something that are natural as far as humans go in our relationships and our in our brains, all of that jazz. And yet we have to just simply be aware that they're there, they exist. And yet we have to, <laughs> I want to say, ignore them in being spiritual. Being spiritual means not pleasing other people by sacrificing yourself and your own values or belief system. But it also doesn't mean changing other people either. It means meet people where they're at and let them be themselves. Even if you disagree with them, even if you don't like how they're being, just let them be it. That's There's a freedom in spirituality. There's a freedom in being spiritual to let people be free as their spirit chooses. And you know that oftentimes some of the things that they're saying or how they're acting is really a mind thing that is based on fear, perhaps, or uncertainty, insecurity, all of those things which actually fear is behind. But it's not to judge them or belittle them by just acknowledging, hey, let their spirit be free. Let them do what they need to be doing. And release every opportunity you have where you can judge someone or criticize someone, release it as best you can. That's being spiritual. That's being spiritual. And that includes yourself. Okay, so being spiritual is not about neutrality. People who are spiritual, like me, I'm not completely neutral. There's no way. Oh, I am so opinionated. I have opinions. Yes. Yes. I, of course I do. And expectations, recognizing that those of you who perhaps watch some of my channeling, etc., have expectations of me that I won't be able to fulfill. I will never be able to fulfill that. I can't, I can't reflect back to you your incredible value by telling you you're right. Because there's not a right or a wrong, there's an alignment. There's a what's right for you and what's right for the moment. There's a timing factor. There's an individual factor. There's a lot of factors that go in to that alignment. And what being spiritual means for me is different than what it means for you. And that's okay. That's okay. We're not talking about religion versus new age. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what does spiritual mean to you? Does it mean being a kind person? Does it mean donating your time to the food shelf, you know, working there once a month? Does it mean taking care of your niece while your sister's at work? Does it mean getting the neighbor's mail because they're elderly and you know they have a rough time during those slippery Minnesota winters? What does it mean for you? Does it mean service? Does it mean kindness? Does it mean, does it mean work in progress, being spiritual? Does it mean learning and being a student? Does it mean showing up and just being as you are? Come as you are. Come as you are. I can tell you what it's not. It's not about perfection. You as a spirit are completely perfect, but your mind will never believe that in this lifetime. And that's okay. You don't have to convince yourself. You don't have to convince me. You don't have to convince anybody. You just have to believe it for yourself. And that's being spiritual. Thank you so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I hope you will take my advice and grab out your journal and ponder this concept of being spiritual and what it means to you and recognize that you have so much power in awareness and <laughs> recognize your ability to be a little more soft within yourself as far as judgment or expectation goes. I hope that this audio has inspired your spirit and filled you up with some hope today. As always, at Above Live channel or on my Fairy Grasshopper channels on YouTube, the purpose is to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope so that you can live your life. This is your life. It's yours. It's yours. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.